So if your music doesn't match, if it doesn't match across channels and pieces of content, and if it doesn't match your brand attributes, there's going to be a disconnect. It's not. My logo popped up with one little sound. It's the same place every week. And I skipped one week and people actually noticed it. Um, how, how can we as advisors, I get Netflix, I get Apple, like that, how that helps their brand. How can advisors leverage that audio branding? Is it meaningful or is it just something to stand out? Kind of, where do you see that fitting in with what we do with our marketing? Oh, absolutely. Anything that you're putting out, whether it's a podcast, a video, an audiogram, um, you can have sonic branding that is consistent across all of those pieces. And that's what you want because the number one killer of trust in a brand is inconsistency. People smell inconsistency like in this very animalistic way, we pick up on it like, oh, that logo's off, the color's weird. Something happens where we think, don't trust it, it's off. Um, so if your music doesn't match, if it doesn't match across channels and pieces of content, and if it doesn't match your brand attributes, there's going to be a disconnect. It's not trustworthy. So you can have Sonic branding created. You can spend a lot of money on it. You can spend a few hundred bucks on it. It kind of depends um, how much you want to do but we do it, you know, we, we help all, anyone who comes on Wealth Voice, we offer Sonic branding. And Sonic branding, it's, it's like intro music is part of Sonic branding, but you also can have, this is cool, walk-on music. So when you go speak at a conference, your walk-on music as you're walking onto the stage is based on the same Sonic DNA, which is like the overarching theme of all of your sounds. Like I have walk-on music that sounds a little like my podcast music. It's like, but it's different. I'm trying to think what my walk-on song would be. You can so, oh. so, so so would you want to do a song or would you want to do something that ties into the brand? And I, I well, love branding. So now yeah. that you now that you explain that your walk on sounds a little bit like your podcast, to me that I almost like that better. But then I also think it's cool to have a song that like hypes me up as I'm walking on stage. Yeah, to talk. yeah, I know what you mean. It, it can go both ways, but really the ideal is to have your own original, unique music that's unique to mm -hmm. you, versus borrowing from pop culture. But that's also powerful like borrowed interest. You can see that in advertising. It, it works. I want to, before we kind of go further, I want to get your take. I totally agree that humans like audio and video and that allows people to get to know us better. We, it, it processed faster. Why do you like audio more than video? Not to say you don't like video, but obviously you've put all of your eggs behind audio. What is it about audio that you choose over video? I actually do love video, um, but audio is easier. It's more accessible. It's uh, easier to produce. I think that it's something that more people can create easily. Like not everyone's great on video. Video is more stressful. <laughs> We're all Zoom fatigued. You have to get your makeup on and deal with the lighting and everything. It's, it's more work and the production is it's longer. But with audio, you can pop in and out. You could even record a briefing on your iPhone. It doesn't sound half bad. The technology is so good these days. And I've always been a verbal voice kind of person, not a visual learner at all, like auditory learner. That's probably why I'm drawn to it. But I will say this, YouTube is so powerful. If you can do video, do it too.